Hey everybody, this is Brian and welcome to the 38th LAMP tutorial. Today we're going to be discussing interfaces. So let's just start by cranking out some code here. Did I say cold or code? Hmm, it's been a long day. So interface and let's say person. And actually that's bad form. We should say I person. Now typically you would name an interface starting with an I. That way you know it's an interface. And then we'll just say public function say name now what is this we haven't really seen this before um, we got an interface got a name looks a lot like an abstract class because it's got a function that's not defined there's no code block and it's very similar but the difference between an interface and an abstract class is an interface is not a class. An interface is a contract between objects. And I'm going to explain that here real quick. Let's actually make another interface. We'll call it I employee. Public function. Say ID because every employee has an ID number. And we're going to actually extend the iPerson interface. Now this looks like an awful lot like a class. In fact it is inheritance. It uses extends. So we're extending the iPerson interface. So you can create multiple interfaces and can join them into one bigger interface. See we have an iPerson and then the iEmployee. Now let's actually make a class. We'll say class manager implements and we'll say I employee now you see how we're not extending the I employee we're implementing the interface what does that mean well these don't exist in memory and I'm not going to bore you with a long lengthy lecture on how memory works but you should know that unlike a class these actually don't exist in memory they're just a blueprint in its most basic sense of the word it's just a structure it's an abstract, abstract class, as you would call it, but it's an interface. So an interface is just a contract saying that this object will have these functions. So the manager class, we should implement these functions. Now, how do you go about implementing them? Well, pretty simple, actually. You just say, let's grab this. And then we'll grab this. Now notice how no error is being thrown. We actually can run this without everything it needs. So let's say uh, whoopsie, made a boo boo. That's the official technical term for it, by the way, is a boo boo. Notice how it has say name, but it doesn't have say ID. Let's actually try and run this and see what happens here. Notice how, hmm, didn't spit it out. Why? Because there's an error. When you make an interface, you have to define everything that you implement. I should say you have to implement everything you've defined. See how we're implementing I employee, and we're only defining say name, or we're only implementing say name. We also need the say ID. Now, suddenly, magically, it works. Why? Because in the background, it's throwing a fatal error. And if you've watched my tutorials on uh, on the uh, error handling it's a little bit different when it gets into object-oriented programming but it's there you can just simply test that by doing that so an interface is a contract saying that the manager class implements or agrees to implement everything in the I employee interface the I employee interface has the say ID but it also extends the I person interface through inheritance so it also must implement the say name function. 
And there you have it. Now, you may be asking yourself, why in the world do you need any of this stuff? I remember when I first learned this, I'm not going to say how long ago it was because it was a very, 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 very long time ago. But when I learned all this stuff, um, I, I remember sitting there going, why do you need this? This makes You can just make the functions in your class. You don't need any of this template interface guck. Well, actually you do. Think about it this way. If you're writing code for a company, how many different types of employees are in that company? Well, you've got, let's see, you've got your mail boys, or your mail girls, depending. Um, you've got your HR people, you've got your sales people, you've got your IT folks, and even in IT, you've got database people, you've got programmers, you've got web designers, you've got graphic designers, you've got business intelligence, on and on and on. Well, each one of those has the same basic functions. Each one of them should have you know, an employee ID or a name. So you use an interface to define a minimum level or a contractual obligation that if it's going to be this type of person, a manager, a salesperson, a HR drone, they're going to need to implement that interface. That way you can target that interface and you know that every type of class, whether it's a manager or a mail clerk, they're going to have the minimum allowed or I should say the minimum required, which would be, in this case, name and ID. Takes a while to wrap your head around that. Trust me, it took me a little while. But uh, once you actually get into interfaces and really into object-oriented programming, they're a real lifesaver, especially if you start working in a team environment. Because let's say you're working on this massive code base that's going to target you know different types of employees and you're working on the manager class, but someone else is working on, say, the HR class. Well, that's when you need an interface, a standard agreed upon way of doing things. So that's all for this tutorial. I hope you found it educational and entertaining, and thank you for watching.